As we work our way through the Easter stories, hear this rather unique one from John's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 24 through 29. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. All the doors were shut. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Thomas was called the twin. Twins arrive in this world together and often do many things together. Whether the twins are of the same gender or not, there seems to be an uncommon bond between them that is maybe more so than oftentimes with other siblings. One of the unconvincing but nonetheless intriguing suggestions is that Thomas's twin sibling isn't named by scripture because his twin was so well known to the early Christian community as to not need naming. Was his twin no less than Jesus himself? Some have suggested as much. I'm not convinced. What is certain and beyond doubt is that as a twin, Thomas would have gone through life measuring himself in equal terms with the one closest to him. But in today's story, he's left out. Much has been made about Thomas's doubt. For my part, I can't tell you how many times I've preached about it, saying often that doubt is not the antithesis to faith, but is an honest wrestling with the foundations of faith, and in fact is the foundation of faith. In fact, Leslie Weatherhead, who is one of the most famous Methodist preachers in Great Britain in the 20th century, once wrote a book entitled, the Christian agnostic. That's a title that certainly says a lot. I think we can and should say more about how it must have felt for Thomas when all the other disciples had gotten to experience the Easter Christ, but he, he was left feeling left out, late to the party, the one who was missing out. In fact, scripture says a whole week had passed by and he was left feeling passed over, which was ironic because hadn't the disciples gathered in Jerusalem for the Passover festival to start with? I've had that feeling and so have you. A joke has been told and everyone gets it. But somehow it's lost on us. Or we show up for a meeting and realize we didn't get the memo that it was changed or canceled or was earlier in the day. Oops. Maybe we felt it when we see others promoted ahead of us. And the accounting sheet that we keep in our heads to keep score shows us further and further behind. But some of those people are idiots. How's that possible? 
Maybe it's love that's passed us by, or the clock that tells us that we're supposed to have children and a family by now, or we see our friends getting new and better cars or houses or taking cool vacations. Haven't we all had the feeling in some way, shape, or form of being left out? We see others getting what we're missing. The Easter Christ won't let a little thing like shut doors get in the way of getting to us. The Easter Christ won't let a little thing like the passing of time to pass us by. The Easter Christ will do whatever can be done to make sure we aren't left out. Perhaps what's best to love about this whole scene is the way it's a living out of Jesus' parable of the lost sheep. We're the ones, the ones Jesus goes after. He's relentless. He's determined. He's unstoppable. At whatever levels and places where you have felt left behind or left out, can you hear that today? Can you join the twin in knowing that Jesus is here for you? And as Jesus said to Thomas, peace be with you. Happy Easter tide, my friends.